Good morning, and welcome to church here at Harmony Grove United Methodist Church. Delighted to see you folks in the pews, and delighted for those who are joining us uh, who are online watching now and who will watch us over the next week or so. Uh, we're delighted to have you all attending today to this second Sunday in Advent. You may not have noticed, but Christmas is getting closer. I know some of you count down daily from, you know, the day after Christmas. How many days is it now? 20? All right. Some on top of it. I guess you could just do the math, couldn't I, real quick? But <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, glad to see you all here today. Just a few quick announcements. Um, the UMW are having lunch today uh, after church, and I'm sure everyone who is coming to that is aware of that. Uh, the Joy Club is going to have a, a, media, a meal on Tuesday, but it's reservation only. Or this Tuesday the 21st, reservation still available? Okay, so uh, also those of you who uh, might want to buy a poinsettia in honor or memory of someone, I believe today might be the last day, uh, so get that in uh, quickly. Next Sunday is our church council meeting. Uh, our leadership council will be meeting at 2 o'clock uh, by way of Zoom. Those of you who are on that committee will get uh, information regarding that. This Friday, open house at the Parsonage. That is the Parsonage of Oak Grove, where Beth and I live. Um, we are going to have an open house from 4 to 8. Uh, it's there near the church. Uh, we have an address if you need it. Uh, it'll be from 4 to 8. The uh, Parsons Pub will also be open. Oh, you didn't, it, Parsons Pub will also be open. Um, so for those of you who want to uh, uh, come and check that out. Um, and also you have an announcement. Yes, um, I've had several people ask me about the angel tree and I've been in contact with um, the Lilburn Co-op this week and they have identified uh, five uh, families that are in need. So I'm going to be working, putting those angel ornaments together and putting up the tree in the narthex. Um, I will put all that information, add it to the what's happening. So you'll get that on Wednesday and I hope that everybody can uh, participate in that um, small gift to our community. And it is a season of giving. As you may have noticed in your uh, bulletin today, there's a flyer on Action Ministries. You see their uh, mission and vision. Uh, this is open all month this month, uh, February, so feel free to uh, give a donation. I know some of you uh, uh, participate in the special offerings and have special ones that you particularly like. If this is one of those, please feel free to give generously. Uh, at this time, as you are able, uh, please stand uh, for the reading of our call to worship. O come, O come, Emmanuel. And be light for our darkness. Be comfort in our grief. Be a healer for our infirmities. Be a friend for our loneliness. An oasis for our searching. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Restore our joy, heal our wounds, and bring us peace. Let us pray. Most gracious Lord, during this season of Advent, we, prepare that you, we, we pray that you would prepare our hearts for your homecoming into our world and into our lives. Lord God, bless every family here today. Be with them during this season, hopefully one of joy. Lord God, we invite you into this, our worship service, that we might worship you in spirit and truth and that all that we do today may ascribe to you the glory that is your due. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And if everyone stays, oops, never mind, sorry. Good morning. We'll be lighting the second Sunday, or the second Sunday of Advent candle. Uh, we light this candle as a symbol of Christ the way. May the word sent from God through the prophets lead us to the way of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Let us stand and sing together hymn 213, Lift Up Your Heads, Ye Mighty Gates. Lift 
Lift up your hands, ye mighty kings, behold the King of glory waits. The King of kings is drawing near, the Savior of the world is here. Fling wide the portals of your Adorned with prayer and love and joy. Redeemer, come with us, abide. Our hearts to thee we open wide. Let us thy inner presence feel thy grace and love. Eternal praise, eternal fame, be offered, Savior, to thy name. Good morning, Harmony Grove friends. Today, I want to talk to you about preparation. How do you prepare for something special? Have you ever found it exciting to watch large construction machines at work? A few of the familiar ones you might see are bulldozers, road graders, backhoes, cranes, forklifts, and tractors. I really enjoyed tractor rides on my grandpa's farm when I was younger. Many of these large pieces of equipment are used to move earth. You will see that some have big buckets so that rocks and dirt can be moved from one place to the other. Others lift heavy objects, drill through concrete, and dig ditches. Perhaps you have been on a road trip with your parents and were stopped by a construction worker holding a sign. If you looked around, you probably saw some of these large machines building a new road or repairing an old one. What did you notice? In the city, you may have seen these machines preparing an area where a new building would be built. Did you see a tall crane lifting a large beam? Or a backhoe digging a ditch? preparation that goes on before new roads or buildings are built is exciting stuff. This is also an exciting time of year. We 
prepare to celebrate Christmas, the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In today's lesson, we learn about a man named John who traveled all around telling all who would listen about Jesus. Just as the earth movers we have been talking about prepare for a new building or a new road, John came to prepare the people for the arrival of Jesus. We read in the Bible, Make ready the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. This message is for each one of us today as well as for the man named John. As we prepare for Christmas, we have the opportunities to share God's love and joy with others. The machines we talked about today are powerful and so is God's love. Let us go forth and share the peace, love, hope, and joy of Christ with all that we meet. And that's the good news for today. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for loving us. Prepare our hearts as we await your Son, Jesus. In Christ we pray. Amen. I know when we traveled, Joe used to always pick out the earth movers. He loved the construction stuff. Um, Exciting. Thank you. Um, I hope this uh, past week, if not the week before, you all have received your pledge card. That's right. Uh, we are in pledge season. And um, just want to tell you a couple stories. I've talked to a few people, and um, one person told me that uh, though they've given to this church faithfully, they had never done a pledge card in the many years they've been a member here until they realized how we need that in order to establish our budget for the coming year. I thought, wow, cool, someone's listening. Another person said, you know, I've given X amount every year, but I've decided just to increase that a little bit. Yay, great. Another person told me that they've recently come into a kind of a legal settlement, and uh, they're going to give 10% to Harmony Grove, one-time donation to help with our pledge drive. People are responding uh, to the financial need of this church, which is always present with us. And I thank you for those who have given faithfully throughout the years. Hopefully this uh, last email, I kind of broke down the budget a bit for you. And you might have seen that, you know, roughly, well, 87%, <laughs> roughly, that's not pretty exact, uh, is used for administration, salaries, and of course salaries, you know, you get people like us. So that's, well, that's money well used. But anyone who does a budget knows salaries is always the biggest part of a budget administration costs, building maintenance, about 87%. And if, you, uh, have, if you're following the math, uh, usually we, uh, last year and the previous years, we kind of get about 80 to 85% uh, of our budget uh, dedicated to us through pledges, leaving another 15 to 20% uh, kind of that we accept by faith. Well, if you think about it, 87% goes to maintaining this, who we are. 13% goes to outreach and mission. 10% of that is the apportionments, which we as connected Methodists to our bigger church give to help support ministries throughout the world, which is dynamic and great because we can multiply that together and do some great things throughout the world. Leaving 3% of our budget that we use for local ministries and programming. So think about it those 85% who give faithfully and have always given faithfully and will continue to give faithfully, thank you. But that covers just this building. What if we increased a little bit just for that ministry, for that outreach, for that programming? What if those who hadn't pledged before decide, hey, 
my little giving, whatever it is, is really going to enhance that ministry, that outreach, that programming. So it really is a chance to make a difference in the way we as a church realize how we are called by God to fulfill the mission of making disciples of Jesus Christ throughout the world. How do we do that here through our ministry, through our finances, through our programming, through our outreach? And I thank all of you who continue to give. I know many of you deposited your uh, uh, tithes and gifts uh, and receptacles out front. Uh, I'm glad to see people are starting to give in the offering place just a little bit more. That's great. Uh, I know many of you are giving online, so I just pray you'll continue to live and to, to, to give and be prayerful about what it is you might contribute in terms of a pledge uh, for our coming year. And just so you know, soon, very soon, I will be done talking about money. Yeah, particularly if you all meet the budget. <laughs> uh, but next week, we'll receive pledge cards. Uh, those who have already been given will bring those forth, and we'll have a blessing for the pledges. Uh, and then... then um, and pledges will still be received after that, but that's the time we set aside just to bless the pledging. Let us bless these gifts. Let us pray. Most gracious Lord, you are a good and gracious God, full of loving kindness and mercy, and we are delighted to be called your children, delighted to be loved by you. And Lord God, you loved us first before we even knew who you were, and you have called us into your presence. You created us in your image, breathed into us the breath of life, you continue to give us good things. We thank you for all the many ways that you've blessed us, you've given to us so freely. And Lord God, we pray that that which we give back to you uh, may be used for the building of your kingdom and for making disciples of Jesus Christ throughout the world. Bless those who give, bless those who receive, and grant us the wisdom to use these resources well uh, for the mission you've called us to here at Harmony Grove. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Our lay Bible reading for today is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 68 through 79. Hear these words. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn, of, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in the darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The word of God for the people of God. It is now time for us to come together as a community and go to God in prayer. Let us settle our hearts and minds. Let us pray. Dear gracious and heavenly Father, we come before you to worship you and to praise your holy name. We come to declare your glory and proclaim your love and mercy and grace. We come to honor you and to exalt the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. From eternity past, you determined to redeem a lost and wretched humanity. From eternity past, Jesus chose to pay the price of that redemption. Throughout history, the prophets spoke of your promise to send a deliverer, a Savior, a King. So during this season and throughout the year, we celebrate the miracle of the birth of your son, Jesus Christ. God in flesh, who left his throne of glory to take on the form of man, to walk among, uh, among us, sinless, proclaiming the gospel of salvation through faith in him. What a blessed reality, dear Father, to know that we are loved with an everlasting love that you will never leave us or forsake us, that your grace is available and sufficient to strengthen us and comfort us and empower us. Knowing this, Lord, we are deeply grieved when we fail to honor you with our obedience. We love you so much, but so often we are drawn away by our own temptations. It is in you that we live and move and have our grace for life. And yet too often we choose our way over yours. Father, as a church, as individuals, we confess this sin of rebellion against you. We are so grateful that when we can come into your presence any time with a broken heart and acknowledge our sin to you and receive forgiveness and cleansing, we thank you that the guilt and the penalty for sin are paid for by Jesus that there is no condemnation for us who are in Christ. We thank you that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can repent of our sins and live a life that glorifies and testifies Jesus Christ. Father, I pray now for our church. As a body of believers, I pray that our fellowship is pleasing in your sight. Give our leadership wisdom and discernment. Help us to maintain our unity as brothers and sisters in Christ and welcome all who come in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And Father, I pray for each member and attender of Harmony Grove that first and foremost they understand the gospel and know Jesus Christ as Savior. 
I pray that their relationship with you would grow more and more extraordinary. I pray that growing in their Christian walk would be an all-consuming passion, knowing that they are servants of the Most High God, equipped by him to be useful for the kingdom of heaven. I pray, Father, for each person to be a minister for Christ, serving one another with love and humility. I know, dear Lord, that there are those who are hurting and struggling. For these folks, I pray for an abundance of your grace and an overwhelming sense of your presence. I pray that they would find their comfort and peace in you. And I pray that those around them would be sensitive to their circumstances and be willing to minister to their needs. God, it is in your precious name that we ask all of these things. We lift our voices together, praying the prayer your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And all the people said, Amen, Amen. All right. 
At this time, I would like to ask you to stand for the reading of the gospel, which this morning is taken from the gospel according to Luke, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Hear these words, and please forgive me if I stumble over some of this Greek. Hear these words. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Iturea, and Trachonitis, and, and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all the flesh shall see the salvation of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Now, just as when you see dirt movers preparing the soil for something to come, so you all know we are in Advent when our gospel reading starts talking about John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the prophet who lived in the Judean desert um, just east of Jerusalem toward, between uh, Israel and Jordan, the Jordan Valley, who ate locusts and honey, or as our picture has, and had hung out with little tiny lambs, uh, in the wilderness there, uh, who ate locusts and honeys, who baptized people in the River Jordan, and who by all accounts was a very colorful person. You brood of vipers. I mean, how many times would you like to say that? He got to say that to the Pharisees. You brood of vipers. Man, that's colorful. Good for him. He was a very colorful man, and so colorful perhaps that his preaching got him on the wrong side of powerful people, and in the end cost him his life by being beheaded at the whim of of a young girl. It is in our reading for today, however, that we hear of John the Baptist's primary mission. It was his mission to prepare the way of the Lord. His task was to be on the scene prior to the coming of the Messiah so he could proclaim the coming of the Messiah and thereby prepare the people for the Messiah's advent, the Messiah's coming, through offering a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. You could say, in short, that his mission was to call people home to God. Now, I don't know about you, but going home is not always a walk down easy street. The kid who once left home is not the same as the adult who returns home. For some, going home is fraught with difficulties due to past trauma or misunderstandings, broken relationships, or long-standing and unresolved arguments. For some people, returning home, for whatever reasons, may be one of the hardest things they may ever have to do. Going home is not as easy as it sounds. We all know this, and so does God. So what does God do to help us find our way home? God does all he can to remove any obstacle that may hinder our return. The passage that John the Baptist quotes is from the prophet Isaiah and refers not only to the hardships uh, that they may encounter when returning home, but also to what God will do to remove those hardships. Isaiah, in this prophecy, is addressing the Jewish community that was in exile in Babylon, which is current-day Iraq. Many, many years ago, in a land far, far away, Jerusalem and the land of Judea was destroyed by a foreign invader from Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar. Boo, King Nebuchadnezzar. The time was 586 BC, which is roughly 2,600 years ago. Not only did this foreign invader, Nebuchadnezzar, and the armies of Babylon destroy Jerusalem and the land of Judea, that is the physical home of the Jews, but he also destroyed the temple in Jerusalem. That is the spiritual home of the Jews, where Yahweh reigned as God. 
you would think that this would, be, it would have been enough. But no, this is Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. Ooh, he went a little further, or actually a lot further, and did a most hideous thing. He rounded up all the people, except perhaps for the very poorest of the land, and physically removed them from their homes in Judea and resettled them back in Babylon. This experience, this experience, which is considered uh, the single most traumatic experience for the people of God, except perhaps for the Holocaust, is called the exile. The exile is the metaphorical hinge on which Jewish theology and spirituality turns. The people of God before the exile are not the same as the people of God after the exile. The exile forever changed their sense of identity, their sense of community, their sense of belonging, and their sense of what constitutes home. It was during this time of exile, after some 70 years of being exiled, during which time the old generations passed away and the new generation was born, and the Jewish people had made new homes and new businesses in Babylon and had made new lives for themselves and their families and had forgotten their old homes back in, the, back in the homeland, back in Judea. That the Jewish prophet Isaiah was tasked, was given a task by God to inspire and motivate them to return to their war-torn and devastated homes to rebuild and to start anew. By no means was this an easy task. Not only was their ancestral home destroyed and now overgrown and uh, run over with hyenas and wild animals and snakes and scorpions and all that stuff, but they also had to traverse on foot nearly a thousand miles of rugged desert and hostile territory. It is not what we would call an easy street by any account. Not only would they journey home, by hard, be hard and ruthless, but the home that awaited them was utterly destroyed and desolate. There is a very good chance that if I was one of those to whom Israel, Isaiah was speaking back in the day, and you know me, I like a good adventure, I would have had some serious doubts <laughs> about responding positively to his message and returning home. For this reason, Isaiah pulls out all the stops when he speaks here and elsewhere throughout Isaiah about how God will transform the journey home from that proverbial and expected highway to hell into the unexpected but welcome easy street. Or to use the words of Isaiah, every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth. What we boomers from the Vietnam era called the Ho Chi Minh Trail, or what we Atlanteans called the Cab Avenue, will instead become Easy Street, a tiptoe through the tulips. Now, we all know that in reality, though God could do it, God would not physically transform the landscape before them would not physically transform this landscape through the harsh Syrian deserts between Babylon and Jerusalem in order to make it easier for the people of Israel to return home. No, he wouldn't physically remove those obstacles. But God would, in fact, do all he could to remove the spiritual, the emotional, the relational, and the social obstacles that would prevent his people from returning home. And how would God do that? By being with them, by becoming and being Emmanuel, which means God with us. Which brings us, finally, to Advent. All of us, when we are separated from God, are in exile. And all of us need to return home, to our spiritual home. In God. As St. Augustine said, Thou hast made us for thyself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it finds rest in thee. We are created in the image of God. We are children of God. 
God is our heavenly parent. We are God's children. And all of us are uneasy, out of sorts, aimless, lonely, afraid, dissatisfied, unfulfilled, or as St. Augustine said, restless when we are in exile and separated from our home in God. And the only remedy for this dis-ease is to return home. Will it be easy? By no means. Not at all. Nada. Many of us are so filled with pride, the attitude that we can do it alone, that we don't need anybody, especially God, to help us, that admitting we need God and need to return home to Him is just about the last thing we would ever admit, let alone act on. But, like the prodigal son, who, when he finally decided to return home, found his father waiting and watching, ready to welcome him with open arms, God is doing all he can to remove every obstacle, every hindrance, every resistance, every doubt, every mountain, every valley, every crooked road that lies between us and our lonely exile and God's welcoming and forgiving embrace. God is indeed preparing the way for our return home. He is calling us home. Can you hear him? This is Advent. Amen. Now at this time, we are going to prepare our hearts for our communion service. Those of you who are online, I, hopefully you've got some elements ready. If not, um, you have a few moments here. Uh, please join me on page 12. And I think we will have Jim come forward to show us how to get these little packages open for any new ones, new folks. And just so you know, that will be at the end of the liturgy. Um, we will partake of the elements together at that time. Please join me on page 12 for the invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now for the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join your unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this all of you, this is the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, the body of Christ for us and the world. The body of Christ broken for you. Amen. And in this cup, we recognize the continuing presence and promise of Christ for us and the world. The blood of Christ spilled for you. Amen. Let us stand together and sing hymn um, 567, Heralds of Christ. Heralds of Christ, to bear the King's commands, Immortal tidings in your mortal hands, as sun and carry swift the news you bring. Make straight, make straight the highway of the King through desert way. Dark fen and deep Modras Through jungle sluggish seas and mountains pass Build now the road and falter not nor strip Prepare across the earth the king's highway. Lord, 
Lord, give us faith and strength the road to build, to see the promise of the day fulfilled, when war shall be no more and strife shall cease. Upon the highway of the Prince of Peace. Please receive this benediction. This season, as you prepare your home for those who are coming home, remember that you too have a homecoming awaiting you. God has prepared the home for you. He is but waiting for you to turn, and he will be there, arms open, waiting to receive you, to gift you with the life he has promised you, a life of fullness, a life of joy, a life of happiness, a life of service, and a life of commitment, a life of meaning. Know that God loves you beyond all that you can imagine. Go forth and share that love one with another. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.